Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Yes. Okay, great. How are you? Is everything okay? I'm uh, some allergic, but everything okay. Allergic? Really? Because the weather changes. Oh, yeah, it's true. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Anyway, <laughs> we have to start the class. Well, I'm doing good. Thank you very much. A little tired, but I'm okay. <laughs> I think everybody is a little tired at this time in the evening. <laughs> well, anyway, um, we're going to start as usual. Well, I'm going to start sharing the screen with you. Okay. Now, um, as usual, I'm going to call the attendance. So when you hear your name, please let me know. Here we go. Just a second. All right. Today is Tuesday, the January 24th. So um, number one, Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Alejandra Cristina. Magaña Campos, not here. Okay. Astrid Michelle Flores Escobar. Astrid Michelle Flores Escobar. Carlos Alfredo Ramos Aguila. Present teacher. Thank you. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez. Claudia Janet Iraeta Martinez. I'm here, teacher. Good okay. evening. Good evening. Ever de Jesús Candray Montano. Present teacher. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Gabriel Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. I'm present, teacher. Thank you. Gladys Imelda Sánchez. I'm here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yasmin Vanessa Sosa Juarez. Yasmin Vanessa Sosa Juarez. Okay. Uh, Jose Luis Hernandez Flores. Present. Thank you. Josué Isaías Najarro Martínez. Josué Isaías Najarro Martínez. I'm here, teacher. Okay, thank you. Lilian Estela Portillo García. Lilian Estela Portillo García. Luis Fernando Enríquez Herrera. Herrera. Here, here, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Manuel Aristides Murcia. Present, teacher. Thank you. Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. Ya la vi por ahí. Ok. Paola María Alvarado Cerón. Paola María Alvarado Cerón. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Thank you, teacher. Okay, thank you. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Okay, thank you. Uh, Walter René Quintanilla González. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jenny Maritza Sanchez Flores. Present, teacher. Thank you. I'm going to call out the names of those who uh, didn't reply because I've seen that some of you have just joined the class. So. Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Present. Thank you. Astrid Michelle Flores Escobar. Present. Thank you. Yasmin Vanessa Sosa Juarez. Yasmin Vanessa Sosa Juarez. Lilian Estela Portillo García. Present. Thank you. Paola María Alvarado Cerón. Present. 
Thank you. Okay, one person is missing. All right, let's begin. Everybody be welcome once again. This is Inglés Preavanzado Modulo 2, and uh, that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. And this is session number five. And today is January the 24th of 2023, or 2023, as you prefer. We're going to begin. Well, if you remember, um, sorry, if you remember yesterday, we were studying the passive voice of the present continuous and the present perfect and the use of by and similar expressions. So right now we have to do an activity that is just some extra practice. So what's here for us? Take a look. Um, use the information in the pamphlet and the verbs and prepositions given below to change the sentences from active to the passive. So what is this? Give me a second. Uh, that looks better. Okay. I want you to take a look at this. You have the water we drink, the food we eat, the air we breathe, and the world we live in. So this looks a bit pale. Just let me change the, the sharpness of it so that it looks better. I'm sorry. Okay, now it looks a little bit better. So again, let's take a look. The water we drink. Number one reads, too many dead fish in the rivers are contaminating the water supply. That's the first one. Number two, chlorine and other additives have ruined the taste of our drinking water. So you have the first one is, our drinking water is being polluted by dead fish in the river. So it's the same sentence, but in the first case, it's active. In the second one, it is passive. And they are using the expression in parentheses, which is by in this case. So we're going to try to do this here uh, quickly. I want you to take a look. What about number two? If uh, you have, if you want to participate, Okay, you can do it. So, okay, Gladys Imelda. I guess. Um, Chlo chlorine, okay, sorry. Yeah, the taste of our drinking water mm -hmm. have been ruined by chlorine and other additives. Okay. Um, only one small problem. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. The taste of our drinking water. Mm -hmm. The taste of our drinking water? Has? Yes. Been uh -huh. Has been ruined? By chlorine and other additives by chlorine and other additives. Okay, okay, so the first problem was solved, but there is another problem. The second problem is that you have to use due to, not by. Oh, I, uh -huh. I don't see it, I don't uh -huh. see no, it. No, no problem. So, yeah, we have that. The taste of our drinking water has been ruined due to chlorine and other additives. Okay, good. Thank you, Gladys. We're going to continue now. Oh man, this, I have to change it once again. I apologize, just bear with me for a second. Yeah, it looks better. And also this. Okay, so the food we eat, that's the next one. The spraying of agricultural pesticides has caused mysterious new illnesses. So, what do you think? Who wants to try? Don't be afraid to participate. Always remember, if you make a mistake, well, it's not the end of the world, okay? We're just going to, um, just going to give you the right answer and then everybody's going to learn. So who wants to try? Again, the spraying of agricultural pesticides has caused mysterious new illnesses.
What do you think? Jose Luis Hernández Flores. Go for it, please. It's, uh, I wanna know what is the meaning of illnesses? Uh, sicknesses. Mm -hmm. That's an illness. When you have the flu, that's an illness. It's a sickness. Uh -huh. Then I think um, mysterious new illnesses. Uh, have been caused have been caused mm -hmm. caused by the spraying of agricultural pesticides that is correct yes uh, mysterious new illnesses have been caused by the spraying of agricultural pesticides very good thank you Jose Luis that is the correct answer great what about number four uh, someone has something to say in the chat. Ah, um, by the way, everybody, we have a message from Leslie Victoria Morang Mirón. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read it here. Buenas noches, apreciables estudiantes. Solamente recordarle a los participantes pendientes de enviar el comprobante de entrega del manual educativo. Mañana 25 de enero es la fecha límite para enviarlo. Participantes pendientes de enviar el comprobante, no lo voy a leer, pero sí les invito, por favor, a que revisen el chat de la reunión. Ahí aparecen los nombres. Ok. Para que pues, nos pongamos al corriente con esa situación. Ok, let's continue. So, um, number four. Pollution from cars and trucks is destroying our crops of fruit and vegetables. I need a volunteer for number four, please. Carlos Alfredo Ramos Aguila. Yeah. Uh, our crops of fruit and what is the pronunciation? Vegetables. Vegetables. Mm -hmm. Our crops of fruit and vegetables uh, because of yeah. Is is being destroyed because of pollution from cars and trucks. From cars and trucks. Okay. Yeah. There's only one problem. Okay. Subject and verb agreement. You told me it's being destroyed, but there is a small problem right there. Mm -hmm. What is that? Everything you told me is correct, except for one word, one small word. Maybe Luis Fernando can help us? Yes, I think the, like the subway is in plural, the verb is must, uh, it must be have destroyed instead is have this have destroyed have this have this you sure have have been destroyed instead mm. is being destroyed teacher i not I exactly believe, uh -huh. i believe it would be our crops of fruits and vegetables are being destroyed. Aha, uh -huh, uh -huh. that's more like it. In present continuous, right? So our okay. crops of fruit and vegetables are being destroyed because of pollution from cars and trucks. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Carlos, and thank you, Luis Fernando, also for your participation. Okay, that's good. All right. So if you take a look at this, pollution from cars and trucks is destroying. That's present continuous. So you have to use present continuous passive are being destroyed. Okay. Um, what about number five? Let's continue. The air we breathe. Factory chimneys, like in the picture, are releasing extremely dangerous chemicals. Mm -hmm. How about this one? Ever de Jesus. 
Yeah, it's tried. It's her. Um, okay. Number five, no? Yes, number five. Okay. The extremely dangerous chemicals. Chemicals. Mm -hmm. are, are being released. Are being released. Released. Re mm -hmm. Are being released. Factory timing? Chimneys. Chimneys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Extremely, sorry. Should be, ah, I forgot the word extremely. This is dangerous chemicals. I'm sorry, I'm going to include it. Extremely dangerous. Okay. Now, extremely dangerous chemicals are being released by factory chimneys. That's correct. Very nice. So, um, what about number six? Thank you, Ever. That was the correct answer. Number six, breathing smog every day has damaged many people's health. Mm -hmm. Carlos Alfredo, do you want to give it a try? Hello? Hello? Hi, um, do you want to participate? Yeah. Okay. So breathing smog every day has damaged many people's health. Uh, yeah. Uh, many, many people's health have been damaged. Many people's um, health? Many people's health have been damaged. Okay. So um, let's take a look. Many people's... Let me check. I've, Just have been damaged. Give me a second here. I think I'm reading wrong. Uh, oh, uh, the wrong word here. Just give me a second. Okay, so um, one more time. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, Carlos Alfredo, you have many people's health. Have been. That okay. Have been damaged. The only thing about health is that it's an uncountable noun. You can't count health. So we can't say have been. Uncountable um, nouns take the third person third person singular form of a verb. Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, many people's health uh, has been damaged. Uh, breath in by by breath in and smoke every day um you have to use as a result of those are the words in parentheses do you see it i'm going to zoom in a little bit you have it right here as a result of so you have Many people's health has been damaged as a result of breathing smog. Okay. Thank you, Carlos Alfredo. That's very good. Um, now we're moving on to the final two sentences. So what do you have? More droughts. I'm sorry. The lack of rainfall has created more droughts and bigger deserts. So how about this one? drought as sequia. So the lack of rainfall has created more droughts and bigger deserts. Who wants to try? Walter René. Okay. Uh, more drought and bigger desert. Uh, has been created the lack uh, because the lack of rainfall. Okay, sounds good. But again, there is a problem of subject and verb agreement. You have more droughts and bigger deserts. Plural. 
Okay, more drugs and bigger desert. Uh, how how been? Mm -hmm. uh, have been uh, created mm -hmm. because because of the lack of rainfall. Correct. Okay, more droughts and bigger deserts have been created because of the lack of rainfall. Very good. Thank you, Walter. That's good. And the last one, global warming is harming forests and wildlife. Who wants to try? Alejandra Magaña. Forests and wildlife are being harmed, harmed mm -hmm. because of global warming. Okay. But you have to use through. Ah, yes. Sorry. Uh -huh. True. It's okay. True warming. Okay. So forests and wildlife are being harmed through global warming. That's it. Okay. Very good. Uh, Walter René, do you want to participate? I'm sorry, you, teacher. I'm sorry. <laughs> your, your hand is up. Ah, okay. <laughs> se, se le va a cansar la manita de tenerla levantada. Okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Very good. Okay, this was good practice. Okay, just a second here. There is a slide that I'm not going to use here. Okay, let's continue. That was just some extra practice. Now, um, we have uh, lesson objective 2.3. Everybody, take a look. So, by the end of this class, you will notice and use reduced auxiliary verbs. Okay, this is just like some pronunciation part. So take a good look. It's pronunciation reduction of auxiliary verbs. We're not going to stop here for long. We're just going to mention this because it is not that relevant. I mean, it's good to know, but it's not really that relevant. So listen and practice. Notice how the auxiliary verbs, uh, verb forms, I'm sorry, is, are, has, and have are reduced in conversation. So this is what occurs when you are speaking English with someone else. You don't have to pronounce every word separately, like completely. In some cases, you can reduce them, and the pronunciation is reduced. So, for example, you don't say, or you can say it. There is no problem, of course. But normally, people don't say fresh water is being wasted. That's correct. There is nothing wrong with that. But people usually reduce, you know, uh, how they pronounce this. Fresh water is being wasted. They don't say fresh water is, but they say fre fresh water is fresh water is being wasted. Okay, so that's the reduction of an auxiliary verb. Another case is when they say newspapers are being thrown away. There's nothing wrong with speaking like that. It's good, but people say newspapers are newspapers are. Okay, so they reduce the auxiliary verb. Newspapers are being thrown away. Also, the same happens here. Too much trash has been created. When people are speaking, especially when they're speaking fast, they say, too much trash has been created. Trash, trash, as trash has. Too much trash has been created. And finally, parks have been lost, okay? Instead of saying parks have been lost, people say parks have, parks have. Instead of have, they just say have. Parks have been lost. Parks have been lost. So it is very common for you to hear uh, the reduction of auxiliary verbs in spoken English. Okay, so you have to be careful. You have to train your ear for these instances. Okay, so because of time, we're not going to stop on this point. We're just, we just have to continue, right? Because we still have a lot of content ahead. Now um, we have this activity. It's the listening part, environmental solutions, okay? And this is section 2.5, basically. Section 2.5 in the, in the platform. This exercise is in the platform. So listen to three people describe some serious environmental problems, write each problem in the chart. In the platform, basically, you just have to select what problem is for each person. You have Jenny's problem, Adam's problem, and Kathy's problems. Kathy's problem, I'm sorry. So what do you have to do today? 
take a look. I want you to tell me the problem, tell me what the problem is. And also, I want you to take notes on what can be done about it. Okay, what can be done about it? What do they suggest? What solution do they suggest? Okay, so I'm going to play the track twice. Everybody, please listen, take notes, and uh, then we're going to check the answers. Okay? Let me know if you can hear this. Listen to three people describe some serious environmental problems. Could you hear that? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay great. Okay, I'm going to play it twice. Let's listen. Please take notes, then you tell me the answers. Write each problem in the chart. One, Jenny. You know, I've been reading a lot about the problem of landfills, and it really has me worried. Why? Well, it seems that the easiest way of disposing of trash is by burying it in landfills. The problem is that in many countries, the landfills have already been filled up and it's hard to find places to start new ones. No one wants a huge landfill anywhere near their neighborhood. So what's the solution? Well, there is no easy solution, but many cities are trying to do more recycling so that they can reduce the amount of stuff that goes into the landfills. Two, Adam. I can't believe it's become dangerous to get a suntan. What is this world coming to? Well, the sun has never been good for you, but it's really dangerous now. You see, the ozone layer, which helps protect us from the sun's ultraviolet rays, has been damaged by pollution in the air. When the ozone layer gets too thin, it can cause an increase in skin cancer and other problems. But is there anything we can do to solve the problem? Sure. One of the biggest threats to the ozone layer is cars, the exhaust gases from cars. The best way to save the ozone layer is to drive less. So in many places, people are being asked to carpool. Three, Katie. You know, you always hear about air pollution, but not many people are aware of the problem of water pollution. You mean in the oceans? No. I mean polluted drinking water. It's a problem in almost every major city in the world. Almost all our rivers and lakes, where we get our drinking water from, are being polluted in some way by businesses, farms, homes, industries, and other sources. And even though the water most of us drink is treated, it's still not 100% pure. So what's the solution? Well. It's a complicated problem to solve, but basically what's involved is treating all waste products more carefully so that dangerous chemicals and bacteria don't get into our water supply. I'm going to play it a second Page time. Page 46, Whoa. exercise five. No, just exercise four. Okay, I'm going to play it a second time. Everybody, please listen again and uh, complete the information. Listen to three people describe some serious environmental problems. Write each problem in the chart. One, Jenny. You know, I've been reading a lot about the problem of landfills, and it really has me worried. Why? Well, it seems that the easiest way of disposing of trash is by burying it in landfills. The problem is that in many countries, the landfills have already been filled up and it's hard to find places to start new ones. No one wants a huge landfill anywhere near their neighborhood. So what's the solution? Well, there is no easy solution, but many cities are trying to do more recycling so that they can reduce the amount of stuff that goes into the landfills. Two, Adam. I can't believe it's become dangerous to get a suntan. What is this world coming to? Well, the sun has never been good for you, but it's really dangerous now. You see, the ozone layer, which helps protect us from the sun's ultraviolet rays, has been damaged by pollution in the air. When the ozone layer gets too thin, 
it can cause an increase in skin cancer and other problems. But is there anything we can do to solve the problem? Sure. One of the biggest threats to the ozone layer is cars, the exhaust gases from cars. The best way to save the ozone layer is to drive less. So in many places, people are being asked to carpool. Three, Katie. You know, you always hear about air pollution, but not many people are aware of the problem of water pollution. You mean in the oceans? No, I mean polluted drinking water. It's a problem in almost every major city in the world. Almost all our rivers and lakes, where we get our drinking water from, are being polluted in some way by businesses, farms, homes, industries, and other sources. And even though the water most of us drink is treated, it's still not a hundred percent pure. So what's the solution? Well, it's a complicated problem to solve. But basically, what's involved is treating all waste products more carefully. So the dangerous chemicals and bacteria don't get into our water supply. Okay. Do you have the answers? Page forty-six. Ex All right. Let's take a look. What about the first problem? The first speaker, Jenny, uh, was talking about what? Who knows the answer? Gladys. I'm sorry? Landfish. Uh, landfills. Okay. She was, she was talking about landfills. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Do you know the landfills? Landfill. About trash. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you the pictures. These are the landfills. Can you see that? Those are the landfills right Como there. Los mm -hmm. Exactly, that's what they are. Mm -hmm. Very good. So what can be done about it? Well, she suggest more recycling. Yeah, do more recycling. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Very good. She, she suggested doing more recycling. Good. Thank you, ladies. What about number two? Speaker two, Adam. What problem was Adam talking about? Jose Luis. Uh, I think it's uh, a hole in the ocean layer, maybe. OK, almost, almost. <laughs> the first part, OK, it's a bit different. But yeah, definitely, it, he's talking about that. But there's a different word that he used. What is it? Mm -hmm. Does anybody know what what word did Adam use? Uh, Jose Luis just told us uh, the hole in the ozone layer. It's definitely related to that, but it's not exactly the problem. It's a little different. Walter René. Pollution in the air. Pollution in the air. Okay, well, that is true, but now we're getting a little bit further away from it. Uh, Gladys Imelda wanted to participate. Adam says about the thinning of the ozone layer. The thinning of the ozone layer. Yeah, that's right. It's the thinning of the ozone layer. No, the ozone layer used to be thick, but because of CFCs, it starts becoming thin, thin, thin. Okay, the layer becomes thing. So it's the thing of the ozone layer. And uh, what uh, solution is suggested? We have to drive less. We have to drive less. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your participation. Thank you, Jose Luis. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Gladys. Okay, good. And what about the last one? Kathy, what does Kathy say? What is um, what problem is she talking about? Sandra Cecilia Munguia. 
Can you repeat it, please? I think there's a little problem with the uh, audio. The water pollution. Ah, okay, good. Water pollution. That is good. And what can be done about it? What suggestion do they, you know, give or provide? This one is the most difficult one. Who has this? Raise your hand, please. Gladys. Trading all products industry more carefully. Okay, yeah, very close. You have treat all waste products more carefully. Okay, so that water is not polluted. Okay, that's nice. So that was the listening part. Again, in the platform, basically you just have to identify the problem. Okay, the second part about what can be done about it, that's not there, but it was good practice for us. Let's continue. So uh, moving on, lesson objective, this is 2.6. Today we finished this section or unit. In this section, participants will listen to how to give solutions to problems. Basically, there's a conversation that we need to practice, okay? So um, take a look. Conversation, what can we do? So there are some participants here. There's Carla and Andy, okay? So I need two volunteers, one boy, one girl to play one, one girl to play Carla and one boy to play Andy. Please, who wants to try? De nuevo hago la invitación a que tratemos de participar porque siempre veo las mismas personas participando, ¿verdad? Siempre los mismos cinco o seis. Okay, uh, we're going with Rosa Esmeralda and uh, Jenny wanted to participate, but I need, uh, we, we need uh, a man here for, for Andy. But thank you, Jenny, you go for the next one, I promise. Okay, so Rosa Esmeralda, you play Carla and Manuel Aristides. I want you to play Andy, please. Uh, Let's do it. At, I doesn't did fish. What do you think happened? Uh -huh. Look at all those dead fish. What do you think happened? What does Andy say? Well, there's a factor outside from that pooping chemicals into the river. Into the river. Okay, let's take a look. Um, pronunciation. You have, well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. Yeah, pumping. Well, mm -hmm. well, there's a factory outside, outside from that pumping chemical into the river. Okay, it's pumping chemicals into the river. Okay, so it's Carla's turn. Okay, Rosa? Um, how can they that do that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that okay? The law. Okay, pronunciation. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Uh -huh. Que no es contra la ley. Isn't that against the law? Okay, so uh, Manuel Aristides, what yes, does Andy say? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. Uh -huh. He says, yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. Mm, they don't care. Okay, thank you. Rosa Esmeralda, please continue. What does, does Carla say? That's ter terrible. Mm -hmm. What can we do about it. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Mm -hmm. What does Andy say? Well, one, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. Man man management. Man management. Man mm -hmm. Management. Yeah, Andy says, well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. Mm -hmm. Con la gerencia de la compañía, the company's management. What does Carla say? Rosa Esmeralda? Um, way, way, what if? What if that doesn't work? What if that doesn't work? Okay, thank you. Manuel, can you read well. this part? Well, then another way to stop thin into get 
a TV station to run a story on it. Mm -hmm. Well, another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. Mm -hmm. And then what does Carla say? Uh, Rosa? Uh, yes, company had bad publicity, but the wait what name of the company. Okay, Carla says, yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? Then Andy says, it's called Apex Industries. 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 Mm -hmm. It's called Apex Industry or Apex Industry also. It's called Apex Industry. Mm -hmm. What does Carla say? Oh, no. My uncle is one that taught, taught executives. 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 Yeah, that's right. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have the audio file. Okay, so I'm going to read it. Um, thank you for, for helping me read this. Carla says, look at those, look at all those dead fish. What do you think happened? Andy says, well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. Carla says, how can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Andy says, yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. Carla says, that's terrible. Uh, what can we do about it? Andy says, well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. Carla says, what if that doesn't work? Andy says, well, then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. Carla says, yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? Andy says, it's called Apex Industries. And Carla says, oh no, my uncle is one of their top executives. He's in the board. So, well, that's the thing. Before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary in the conversation? What is pumping? Pump. Chemical. Mm -hmm. Okay, for example, when you go to the gas station, you go to the gas station and you need fuel, you need gasoline. So you pump gasoline into the car. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the meaning of pump. Also, uh, this is what the heart does. You know, the heart pump, 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 pumps blood. Okay through the whole body. That's the meaning of pump. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions about the vocabulary? Or the expressions? No more questions? Okay. We'll continue then. Just give me a second. Okay, good. So, um, well, let's take a look. 2.8, that's lesson objective 2.8. In this class, you will learn how to talk about solutions using infinitive clauses and phrases. Nothing complicated in the end. Just take a good look. So you have the infinitive clauses and phrases. What is this? Basically, an infinitive clause is a clause that begins with the two infinitive form. And what is the two infinitive? Is to and the verb. Just that. To talk, to get, to do, to work, to play, to study, to swim, to run, etc. So one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. Okay. Another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story. 
the best ways to fight HIV AIDS are to do more research and educate people. So what are we going to do right here? Exercise A, find one or more solutions for each problem. Then compare with a partner. So what are the problems right here? One way to reduce famine is la hambruna, right? The best way to fight HIV or AIDS is one way to stop political unrest is one thing to improve air quality is the best way to reduce poverty is one thing to help the homeless is and then you have a list of solutions right here. All right, so we're going to try to do this together, right? This is um, basically in the platform. These are sections 2.9 and 2.10. It's the infinitive clauses and phrases for which there is a video. I want you to watch the video. And there's the knowledge check, which is 2.10. So we're going to do it here. Let's take a good look. So um, one way to reduce famine is, what is that? There's sometimes more than one possible answer. Who wants to try? Okay, Gladys. Letter B. Letter B. Can you read to it, train, please? Uh -huh. To train people in modern farming methods. To train people in modern farming methods. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's a possible solution. One way to reduce famine is to train people in modern farming methods. That sounds good. Okay. Just a moment. All right. What about number two? The best way to fight HIV or AIDS. HIV is in Spanish, VIH, right? So HIV or AIDS is, what is that? Okay, Alejandra Magaña. The letter D, to educate people on how these stories spread. Okay, to educate people on how diseases are spread. That is good. Okay, thank you, Alejandra. Yeah, the best way to fight HIV or AIDS is to educate people on how diseases are spread. Thank you. What about the next one? I need a volunteer, please. Astrid Michel, can you read the whole thing? I want you to read here, number three, and then the second part of the sentence. One way to stop political unrest is um, to provide ways for people to voice their concerns. Yeah, one way to stop political unrest is to provide ways for people to voice their concerns. Okay. Tal es una manera que puedan expresar sus preocupaciones. Yeah, that is correct. Thank you, Astrid. Very good. So um, what about the next one? Number four, Paola Maria Alvarado. Uh, number G, to develop cleaner public transportation. Okay, uh, letter G, right? One thing to improve air quality is to develop cleaner public transportation. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Paola Maria, very good. Number five, who wants to try number five? The best way to reduce poverty is, now there can be more than one possible answer sometimes, so. Okay, so Sandra Cecilia. Uh, to start free uh, uh, training program. Okay. Uh, what letter is that? I'm sorry. C. Letter C. To start free vocational training programs. Okay, that's good. Very good. That that is definitely there. Okay. Um, are there any other forms?
Because that's one, but there is another one. Carlos Alfredo. Letter, letter D. One thing to help the homeless is to build more public housing. That will be letter A, right? To build more public housing. It is possible, I guess, okay, to build more public housing. Although that one is better for a different one. Although it is related, I, I agree. Jasmine, Vanessa. Um, letter H to create more jobs for the unemployed. Yeah, to create more jobs for the unemployed and also letter C to start free vocational training programs. Thank you, Jasmine. Okay, and everybody who part has participated also, thank you, uh, Sandra and Carlos also. So what about number six? One thing to help the homeless is... Jasmine. Mm. There is a to build more public housing. To build more public housing. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you. That is correct. So that's the infinitive clauses and phrases. Again, you can use an infinitive, okay, to provide a suggestion. So one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. Another way to stop them is to get a TV station. And the best way to fight HIV or AIDS are to do more research and educate people. So there you go, to talk, to get, to do, etc. And then the solutions that you find here in the exercise, to build, to train, to start, to educate, to have, to provide, to develop, and to create, all those. We're going to do some uh, an extra practice exercise right here. We're almost done. We only have uh, nine minutes, so let's use them. So it's uh, vocabulary. So choose the correct words or phrases. You have number one, green organizations are trying to save rainforests that have been, and then in parentheses you have created, ruined, or threatened, amenazados, right? So have been threatened by developers and farmers. Okay, so I want you to choose the most appropriate word to complete each of the sentences. I need a volunteer. What about number two? Astrid Michelle. One way to inform the public about the factories that pollute the environment is through educational programs on TV. That is right. Yeah, one way to inform the public about factories that pollute the environment is through educational uh, programs on TV. Good. Thank you, Astrid. What about number three? Who knows the answer to this? Walter René. The ozone layer has been destroyed more in the southern hemisphere than in the northern hemisphere. Okay, yeah, that is correct. The ozone layer has been destroyed more in the southern hemisphere than in the northern hemisphere. Okay, that's good. Thank you. What about number four? Thank you, Walter. What about number four? Raise your hand if you know the answer to this. Carlos Alfredo. Agriculture, agricultural sprays are de damaging the soil in many countries. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Pronunciation, agricultural sprays are damaging the soil in many countries. Correct answer. Thank you, Carlos Alfredo. Very good. Number five, volunteer, please raise your hand. Let's practice the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Gladys. 
Um, poverty is an enormous problem in many large cities where whole families can only afford to live in one room. Yeah, that's correct. Poverty is an enormous problem in many large cities where whole families can only afford to live in one room. Okay, there you go. Very good. Thank you, ladies. That was that was good. Okay, we're about to finish. Okay, we just have this final uh, activity, which is the reading, but it's a little bit long. And I don't think we have the time. So let's try to read this very quickly. Okay, so this is the threat to uh, Kiribati. Okay, which is Kiribati. That's the way it's spelled, but it's actually Kiribati. So look at the picture. What do you think the threat to Kiribati might be? I'm going to. Just sharpen the picture a little bit. So it looks dull. Uh, okay. There it is. Okay. So um, let's see who can help me read the first paragraph, please. We're just going to practice pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to try. <laughs> Olivia. And then Jose Luis for the second one. Okay, Olivia, you may begin. Olivia. The people of Kiribati pronounce Kiribati. Oh, uh -huh. are afraid that one day in their near future their country will disappear literally, literally. several times in the past five years the passive Islam nation has been flooded by sudden high tides this ties which uh, swept across the islands and destroyed houses. House came when there was neither wind nor rain. The older cities of, of Kiribati say this has never happened before. Okay, thank you, Olivia. Uh, according to this, right, the pronunciation is Kiribas, okay? This is a different uh, language. So uh, pronunciation of certain words. The first one is afraid, that's one. The next one, future, disappear, okay? Another word is islands. Uh, we don't pronounce the S on this word. You just say islands, okay. Uh, the second one, Jose Luis, please, second paragraph. Kiribati consists of 33 islands scattered across 3,860 kilometers, kilometers 2,400 miles 400. Of the, Sorry. 400 miles of the Pacific Ocean near the Equator. The Equator, okay. They are particularly threatened Threatened. By, Sorry. Threatened by high tides because none of the islands of Kiribati rise more than two meter, meters. Uh, how point, I say? 6.5 feet. Uh, 6.5 feet above sea level. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jose Luis. Um, what about the next one? Who can help me read it, please? There are some very low islands. So who wants to read paragraph three? No volunteers. Okay, well, in that case, I'm going to take it. Let's take a look. So what is causing these mysterious tides? The answer may be global warming. When fuels like oil and coal are burned, they release pollutants that trap heat 
in the Earth's atmosphere. Rising temperatures create more water by melting glaciers and polar ice caps. Scientists say that if the trend continues, many countries will suffer. Bangladesh, for example, might lose one-fifth of its land. However, the coral island nations of the Pacific, like, forgot the pronunciation, Kiribati, okay, and the Marshall Islands will face an even worse fate. They will be swallowed by the sea. This will be everyone's loss. Coral formations are home to more species than any other place on Earth. The people of these nations feel frustrated. The ocean, on which their economies have always been based, is suddenly threatening their existence. There are no easy answers. These nations don't have a lot of money, so they can't afford expensive solutions like seawalls. And they have no control over pollutants, which are being released mainly by large industrialized countries. All they can do is hope that these countries will take steps to reduce pollution and therefore global warming. So that's the text. There is no exercise associated to it, at least not in the platform, and I don't have it here either. So this is just some reading practice for you. Um, it's basically time to finish the class, but before we end it, I just need to call the attendance one more time. Well, there's only one person that I, whose name I have to call. Jasmine Vanessa Sosa Juarez. Is Jasmine Vanessa here? Yes. Okay, Hi. there you are, totally. <laughs> okay, so everybody's present today. Okay, uh, with this, we finish the second section. Tomorrow we start section number three. And uh, when we finish it, we have to take the midterm too. So everybody, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your patience and for your participation. I will see you tomorrow. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Good night teacher. Take care.